I'm Giorgio Nonaka from Riken Center for Computational Science, or RCCS, situated in Kobe, Japan, and I will talk about the impact of the cooling water temperature on the computer performance and energy consumption done by using the Oak Forest Park supercomputer. And this is a collaborative work done with our colleague uh, Fumiyoshi Shoji, also from Riken RCCS and Professor Toshihiro Hanawa uh, from the University of Tokyo and also Joint Center for Advanced HPC or JCA HPC uh, situated in Kashiwa, Japan. Reliable and stable long-term operation is probably one of the main priorities for the operations of a HPC system and its facility. And more recent, recently, energy efficient operation has become more and more important. And we can cite the activities and recommendations from the Energy Efficient HPC Working Group, or EEHPCWG. And you can see that liquid cooling is treated as one of the keys for reducing energy consumption. However, instead of the cold water cooling, such as that applied on the K-computer, where the inlet water temperature was set to around 15 degrees Celsius, the current trend is to use higher inlet water temperature, especially in the warm and hot temperature range, such as that being used on the Oak Forest Park supercomputer operated by the University of Tsukuba and the University of Tokyo via JCA HPC. Although warm and hot water cooling is considered one of the standard techniques to improve the energy efficiency of modern HPC and data centers, to fairly evaluate its effectiveness, there's a need to take into consideration not only the benefits for the energy consumption on the cooling facility side, but also the possible side effects on the HPC system side, such as on the performance due to DVFS mechanism and power consumption due to the leakage current. In this work, we used the Oak Forest Park system which is an Intel Xeon Phi based massively parallel cluster. Uh, and this system dethroned the K computer as the fastest Japanese supercomputer when it appeared in the top 500 list for the first time. And it was also ranked as the number six in both top 500 and green 500 rankings. The table on the right side shows the techno specification of this system and on the bottom we can also see the chassis with eight nodes uh, which is each an Intel Xeon Phi Night Landing 7250. And it uses water and air for the heat removal of the entire system and a set of chillers, cooling tower, and water pumps is used to maintain the water temperature within the selected set point. And during the regular operation, it is set as a 12 degrees Celsius. And the water passes through the rear door cooling or radiator and also cooling distribution units and reaches the CPU or compute nodes for the heat removal. And for the experimental evaluation, in addition to this 12 degrees Celsius as the center set point, we used lower and higher temperature, uh, that is 9 and 18 degrees Celsius, to investigate the impact of the cooling water temperature on the computational performance and energy consumption. Unfortunately, we could not use 
much lower temperature due to the condensation issue and on the other hand much higher temperature due to the air cooling capacity. We should also mention uh, that we could already confirm the benefits of using higher temperature on the cooling facility site uh, based on the power used effectiveness, the PUE, and coefficient of performance, COP metrics. And in this work, we focused on the impact of the cooling water temperature on the HPC system site. And although we are talking about fixed temperatures such as 9, 12, and 18 degrees Celsius, it should be made clear that the actual inlet water temperature going to the CPUs or compute nodes is much higher and can vary based on the workload. And these graphs show the temperature variation at the 35 CDUs or cooling distribution units. And for instance, even during the idling mode, we can see that the average temperature was around 20 degrees Celsius. And during different job running with different sizes and different applications, we can see that the inlet water temperature can reach much higher temperature ranges. And now these graphs show the inlet temperature when using 9 and 18 degrees Celsius as the temperature set point. And the outlier plot with lower temperature compared to others is from the last CDU or cooling distribution unit responsible for the computer rack with smaller number of nodes. For this investigation, we used the shared memory version of the Limpact benchmark from the Intel Parallel Studio XE. Uh, this single node Limpact was configured to run using 64 cores of the total of 68 and to avoid the first tile used for the OS services such as the timer interrupts. And the problem size was set to 50k and we also used the flat mode where the MCD RAM is used as an extension of the DRAM and the frequency scaling governor was set to the performance mode. And we also used log data obtained from the Linux Turbostat and Perf performance analyzing tool. And this graph shows the histogram uh, of the MIMPA performance obtained from 8192 nodes uh, using the regular temperature set point or 12 degrees Celsius and it also presents the minimum maximum and mean performance and in order to investigate the relationship with the running temperature we analyze the CPU packet temperature at idle mode and this graph uh, shows or heat map shows the packet temperature of the CPUs from a single CDU, which is responsible of, for two computer racks. Uh, in this case, we are showing the racks 01 and 02. And we can see a wide temper dispersion even for those compute nodes sharing the same rack. And this graph shows the correlation plot between the impact performance and the CPU pack temperature during the idling mode. So the actual temperature during the limpack execution is much higher. And if we trace some diagonal lines within this uh, red rectangle, we can select the CPUs that decrease its the computational performance following the increase in the CPU temperature. However, uh, by tracing horizontal lines, within this uh, uh, green box. We can also verify that there are several CPUs with different performance 
even at similar packet temperature. And this graph shows the histogram distribution of the limpa performance when changing the temperature set point from 12 to 18 degrees Celsius. And here, when changing from 9 to 18 degrees Celsius. And on both cases, we can clearly observe an increase on the number of compute nodes in the low performance range. And we should note that we could only evaluate 1024 nodes or just one eighth of the previous set and we used only uh, 1020 nodes by getting rid of four nodes with outlier values. And from the operational point of view, this will theoretically increase the probability of including low performance nodes on the parallel applications. And as a result, this can affect uh, those applications requiring local and global barrier synchronizations. And we have analyzed the CPU frequency during the lean pack execution in order to investigate the reasons for this performance degradation. And here is the plot of the average frequencies from the 64 active cores during the ring pack execution. And the red line shows the base uh, turbo and AVX frequencies uh, based on the product specification. And the central part marked in green color represent the AVX uh, throttling region and we can observe a wide dispersion on the minimum frequency and looking more closely on this green region we could observe three different frequency throttling patterns one is a group of compute nodes where the frequency maintains constant at higher frequency range uh, within 100 megahertz from the base frequency Another group was the nodes where the frequency also maintain, maintains constant, but at much lower frequency. And another group uh, was where the, at low temperature, the frequency remains constant, but it drops when increasing the temperature, and probably due to the activation of the DVFS mechanism in order to maintain the CPU within the TDP limits. And by analyzing the effects on the energy consumption side, we could verify just a small variation on the nodes with increased energy consumption. And these graphs show the histogram of the CPU energy consumption when executing the LIMPAC benchmark. And we also infer that this was related to the activation of the DVFS mechanism. And this work presented a component level analysis on the impact of the cooling water temperature on the computational performance and energy consumption by using the Oak Forest Park supercomputer. Although there are clear gains on the cooling facility side by increasing the temperature set point, from the operational point of view, there is a need to take into consideration the increase on the number of compute nodes which can suffer from performance degradation and may impact the overall, overall performance of the parallel job, that is, increasing the elapsed time. And as future works, we will continue our investigations on the obtained data and we will verify the impact on the parallel applications and also you look for practical applications on the operation side. At the end, we would like to acknowledge all these people and institutions, and we will be happy to receive any questions or comments. Thank you very much.